Let's talk about how to wrangle simple feature objects. A simple feature object is really just a type of data frame, similar to how a tibble is a type of data frame. And both of those, ex and both of those classes extend the data.frame class. This means that you can work with SF objects pretty much the same way that you would work with a data.frame. There, there are some differences in the default behaviors that may be different, and so not everything will be identical. That also means that we can use helpful packages like the dplyr package or similar tools to manipulate SF objects. So let's say that we want to select some columns of a simple feature object. Well, we have the us underscore SF simple feature object. And if we, want to, if we wanted to access the stusps column, we can use the dollar sign operator to access that particular column of us underscore SF. And you can see all the different state abbreviations here. That same column is the fifth column of the data frame of the SF object. So we can use the square bracket notation where we leave the row position blank and then we put five for the fifth column. And that results in us extracting, or really I should say subsetting that object. So notice here that we have the STUSPS column here, but then we retain the geometry objects, which we didn't before. And so while this actually extracts this particular column from the US underscore SF object, this simply subsets the US underscore SF object. So basically what it does is it retains the fifth column and then any of the spatial features of the SF object. Similarly, we could have selected the STUSPS column uh, in square, bra square brackets by indicating the name of the column. And so we do that here. So we have quotation STUSPS in the column position of the square bracket notation. And once again, this subsets the US underscore SF object. We get the STUSPS column as well as all of the associated geometry. We get the geometry list column as well. Uh, you may have noticed before previously that if you want to access a column of data frame, you actually don't even need to specify the row argument. You can just directly indicate the column you want. And so if we do that using square bracket notation, then once again, it subsets the US underscore SF object. And so we get the STUSPS column along with the geometry list column once again. Uh, you can select, so I just want to emphasize here, and I mentioned this here, but using the dollar sign operator is actually going to extract the column from us underscore sf so it actually returns a character vector because that was the kind of vector that was is in u that is in the u um that is in the us the stusps column um, while the other choices that we mentioned above actually subset us underscore sf and so they remain and so the the object return remains a ss op, a, an sf object uh, which is quite important. We can select rows in a similar fashion. So if I wanted to select the second and third row of the US underscore the US underscore SF SF object, I put two colon three in the square bracket notation in the row position. I leave the column position blank here. And you can see I've selected the second and third rows of this SF object, which are the simple features associated with Iowa and Delaware. If I wanted to access a specific row based on some sort of logical statement, I can do that here. So in the row position here, I want to access the rows where the STUSPS column of US underscore SF has the value CO in all caps. And that's just gonna be the single row associated with Colorado. You can use more complicated functions like the starts with function. This is actually a base R function. It's not to be confused with start underscore width, start underscore width, which is the dplyr function for uh, selecting columns of a data frame. This is actually a, a function associated with character strings, identifying character strings that start with uh, certain characters. And so in this case, we want to find all of the all of the values or all the indices of STUSPS that start with the letter C, which is going to be California, Connecticut, and Colorado. And so we put this logical statement in the row argument of the square bracket notation, and we get those three simple feature objects uh, subset from the larger object. Because the US underscore SF object is a, a data frame, uh, we can use dplyr functions like the filter function to select rows if we wanted. So in this case, I'm going to pipe the US underscore SF 
object into the filter function and I want to select or I want to filter the rows of us underscore SF that start with C. So this is really doing the same thing that we have right here, but in the slightly fancier dplyr notation. A really cool feature of SF object is that you can actually use a spatial object to select rows. So we're going to extract the Colorado row from us underscore SF. And so I'm going to identify the row of USF, us underscore SF, where the name variable equals Colorado. So I, this is going to be logical statements. This allows me to select that particular row. I'm going to save it as CO. And I look at the class of CO and you can see it's uh, still an SF object. So we've just subsetted the Colorado row from the larger SF object. And what's really neat is if we pass the CO object, this SF object as the row argument inside the square brackets, then the rows of US underscore SF with geometry objects that intersect the CO geometry object are going to be returned. And so what I do here is I actually pass this SS, this, this SF object to in the row position of us underscore SF. And I'm going to call this CO underscore intersects. And I use open parentheses, close and close parentheses in order to print it in order to print the results to the screen. And this tells us here that uh, we're using the ST underscore intersects function to see which rows of us underscore SF intersect the spatial object in the CO SF object. And basically what we find is that the rows that intersect, the states that intersect Colorado are Nebraska, New Mexico, Kansas, Utah, Colorado, it, it intersects itself, Oklahoma, Wyoming, and Arizona. And just for fun, just to make sure that this looked right, I actually used the, the default plot function that you can use for SF objects. And I took that CO underscore intersects object and I only plotted the name column and uh, you can see we have Wyoming, Utah, Oklahoma, Nevada, etc. And so Colorado here is in the center and we have all the different states that border Colorado. If I didn't want to plot a specific attribute of the CO intersects SF object, I could simply select the geometry list column by using the ST underscore geometry function on the CO underscore intersects SF, SF object. This is going to extract the Ge geometry list column and then there's actually a plot function for that as well or a plot a default a generic plot function for the geometry list column objects and so i can plot the same thing here it's just not going to be colored uh, because there is no attribute that's being plotted it's only plotting the geometries note that this actually can work with more than one spatial object so i've done something similar to before here so what i've done is i have selected the rows of the us underscore sf uh, object where that that were either colorado or california so basically i selected those two states i subset that i called it caco or caco and i now construct a caco underscore intersects object which is the rows of us underscore sf that intersect this spatial object right here which has the states colorado and california and you can see that we get many of the same states as before, the same states that bordered Colorado, as well as some new states like Nevada and Oregon. So uh, we can take the CACO underscore intersects object. We can plot the geometry list column similar to before, uh, and we get most of the same states as before that we get a couple of new states over here. A very important aspect of working with SF objects is actually going to be merging it with other merging SF objects with other data frames or effectively adding attributes, additional attributes to an SF object. And because this is simply extends data dot frame, we can use the base merge function or the dplyr, one of the dplyr join functions. Though note that when you are using these functions, the SF object needs to be the first argument of these functions. So it does work, but if you look at the, the documentation for these functions, there's going to be an argument X and Y, and the X is the first data frame that you want to merge. That is the argument that you want to place the SF object in. 
In order to demonstrate how to use the merge and join functions with an SF object, we're actually going to use a COVID-19 related data frame available in the Bayes Utils package. This is actually a package that's available on my GitHub page. It's not on the CRAN repository. So in order to install it, you actually, you actually want to use the install underscore GitHub function available in the remote package. If you don't have that package installed, then you're going to need to install that first. Uh, and then we can load the relevant COVID data set. It's COVID underscore 2021-0307 because this data set essentially has a cumulative number of confirmed and probable cases and deaths for each state through March 7th, 2021. Uh, so what you want to do here, if you don't have this package, this formatting is kind of bad, but first run this command to install the remote package. And then once the remote package is installed, you can run this command right here to install the beige utils package from my GitHub repository. Uh, note that you can also use, there's also an install underscore GitHub function in the dev tools package. So you could change remote to dev tools and that should also work. And then we use uh, the data function here to call or to load the particular data set we want from the base utils package. And there's a number of pieces of information in here. You can print this if you want to see more information about it. Uh, but basically it has a cases column. It has a population column has a bunch of other columns as well related to the different states. And one of the columns that is in that particular data frame is the state underscore ABV column, which is the state abbreviation column. And that actually matches the STUSPS column of the US underscore SF SF object. So we can use the base merge function to unite these two objects to merge these two objects into a new object, which we're going to call COVID underscore US. So I'm going to use the merge function here. I put my SF object in the X position. I put the data frame I want to merge with it in the Y position. And then the X variable or the X, the variable of the X object that I want to use for merging is the STUSPS column. And then the column of the Y data set or the data frame that I want to merge by is state underscore ABB. So this lets us know which columns of these two data frames we want to use or link the different rows. So we do that, we create this new object, and then I'm gonna use the head function just to look at the result here. And so we can see here that uh, we still have an SF object and we have the STUSPS column. We have some of these other columns that are not terribly useful. I have the column name of, I have the name column for all the different state names, area land, area water, I have another column called state underscore name that it was in the COVID data frame. So there's some redundancy there. I could get rid of that if I wanted to. Uh, I have the deaths column now. I have cases column. I have a population column. I have a column related to income, the proportion or the percentage of the population with a high school diploma at the age of 25, similar information for the BS degree. I also have a column related to voting patterns in 2020. And so now I have taken the original SF object and I've merged into it a number of useful other attributes uh, that we might be interested in. Alternatively, instead of using the merge function, we could have used the dplyr, one of the dplyr join functions. In this case, we're going to use full underscore join where we merge all the rows from both of the data frames together. And note the special syntax in the by argument. So the full join function doesn't have by.x and by.y like the merge function does. And so if you have different columns of your data frames that you want to use to merge the, the rows of your data frames, then you have to use this special syntax. And I just want to point out actually that what is printed here is actually not what I have written in my R markdown document. So this is, I think this will actually work, but there should actually be quotes here. If I jump over to this document, you can see there actually is quotes. And yes, I did, right? And I re knit it and open it up. I don't really know what's going on. Uh, but the point here is that we're using full underscore join. We want to join the US underscore SF simple feature object with the COVID data frame. And we want to use the STUSPS column of this data frame and state underscore ab of this data frame. And that is going to merge those two data frames together. We can use the head function to look at the results. And you can see here that we get the same data frame that we had before. 
Uh, it's actually a simple feature data frame, a simple feature object where we have all the different attributes and then we still have the geometry list column that is so convenient. And one thing you may be wondering is if you merged two data frames and let's say for some reason that uh, this data frame over here had a row that didn't have a corresponding row over here and that and that row basically got added to the merged data frame. What would happen in the geometry list column? Well, there's actually a an empty geometry that uh, can be at, that can be used. And so an empty geometry would be used for that particular row. And so nothing would it basically it would it would be accounted for in the merge. It wouldn't cause any problems later. But that particular row would never be plotted when you went to plot the simple feature object.